looking at our session here, we found the sound that we want to use. Now, how do we go about uh, setting it up the right way to be played on whatever device we're gonna play it on? Um, in this context, for this song, I chose the sort of synth sound that I'm gonna be playing on pads. That's this guy right here. It's a very specific sound, so it's something that you can't really reproduce that, that easily. So I chose to try to chop it up and get individual one hits to be played. So what I've done here is I've chopped up the sample, and some of those chops are going to be very tight. Um, so there are ways that you can go about making it so it, it's more playable in the context of the song. Like right there, there's some really tight chops, really small edits. Um, ways that you can fix that is adding reverb, uh, you know, fading the ends, making sure there's no clicks and pops and stuff like that. Reverb, adding reverb to samples, just chopping a sample out of something is straightforward to do. But the detail of that, how, think about the context of within a song, the abruptness of a sample sometimes in a phrase is just like Adam just played a couple of those in the middle there, just so tightly chopped that it's abrupt, there isn't any sort of elegance to it, and when you're playing it in sequence of other things, for me, it just needs to have a little reverb on it. Here's an example of, of some reverb that I've added to these sounds to make them a little more uh, playable. Subtle, it's nice. It's subtle. It's the glue, isn't it? It's like the glue that, if you're playing these in a, in a part, they'll just nicely tail over each other. Exactly. Interestingly as well, this is a way to take a sample and actually add your own character to it, actually. Because if, if, depending on the reverb you use, the amount of reverb that you use, how long you leave that tail for, suddenly you're taking something, I'm, actually I'm into this kind of thing, you take a sample from a record, but I, I, I don't wanna, I wanna play it as it is so you recognize it. Like if it's an early track, I want it to be like an early track, but I also want it to be like me as a musician. I want it to have, what's the flavor of the track? What are we changing that's subtly different and, and nuanced? We're creating something, right? Yeah, and also how it's going to respond on your headphone speaker or a studio speaker versus a PA. It's drastically different. So you have to sort of tailor yeah. these sounds to match that. Getting it right for a PA is like the biggest challenge for what yeah, we do, right? Yeah, especially low-end information, so like subs. It's This is a really good point, actually. If we're bouncing like a sub drop or a big 808 kick, it sounds great in your headphones, and it'll sound great when you play it on a pad and a module, but think about that in context of a song, so in relation to music. Bottom end in a room in a PA just just can get out of control really quickly. Blow people's heads and off with and stuff, controlling yeah. that, being aware of sonically the way that things sound is, in my opinion, as important as knowing how to bounce it yeah. and, and playing that, it. That's going to come with with you know practice and experimentation and getting sure. used to these sure, kinds yeah. of things. Now that we've got these sounds, uh, we need to figure out a way to get them from here to whatever we're going to play them from, whether it's internally with the software or we're going to load it into a, a pad or a module. Uh, specifically, you know, the SPDSX, you have to know uh, sample rate, right? Sample rate and the bit depth. Uh, SPDSX is 16. Yep. I think the TM6 Pro is, uh, you can do 24 and you can the sample S rate, you can do d multiple sample yeah. rates. But the SPDSX is 44.1, isn't it? 44.1, 16, yeah. yeah. Sample rate and bit depth is all about the quality of the sound, it's about the quality of the source of the signal. One shots, individual samples, like claps, 16-bit, uh, 44-1 is actually fine in context of what you're doing. Absolutely. Right, what about playback though? So for instance, if we're running these samples in, let's say we're doing it in Ableton rather than out of a TD50 or SPDSX, we can have whatever sample rate we need for the project and it's a different way of controlling it. But playback is still the same thing. If you're running playback multiple audio files from an SPDSX, for instance, you need to make sure that when you're exporting your stems, whatever they are, whatever you're going to play along to, are all all start and finish at exactly the same time. And this is like a basic concept for anything that you're doing on any any playback, is that make sure it starts at the right the right time. Exactly. In Ableton, yeah. it's just a you set a loop brace and you bounce from the same time, all the time. Make sure they're all at the same sample rate. Make sure that there isn't anything in there hidden that you're going to play. 
Yeah, I mean, I know some people like to do loop a click or something like that. Personally, I want everything to be linear, start and stop. Like, like you're saying, it, it's just safer, and especially in the context of you know, using it internal module tracks, lock, that, lock it in so there's no discrepancy. When you hit play on your SVSX, it's all there. You don't yeah. have to worry about it. Once you do it properly, think about it from this end first. It's there, all you need. So we chopped the samples, we prepared the playback. Exporting it, specifically, it depends on the door that you're using. So we're looking at Ableton, and we could tell you the shortcuts of how to do that, but it's very specific to this. Just Absolutely, export yeah. a track, make sure you sample where it is correct for the device that you're using it for. Make sure you've chopped it nicely, your samples, and if you want to add exper experiment with adding reverb to it in new characters, make sure you do that, think about that. Make sure all your playback is bounced starting at the same point, end point. And then it's from there that we take it into the machines, whatever device you're using to control this, to play it, whether it's one shot, multi-velocity samples, playback. I think, we, I think we got that. We got that covered, right? Yeah. That was a good, a good video. It's a lot of information. A lot of information. We can get even deeper, right? We could. We but should? But we won't. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs>